And we're asking, we're asking, we are asking that if you see something, say something. Great team number two. All right, all right, all right. Now we have coming to the stage a farmer, I ain't gonna say farmer, but a Motrin, a young lady who, who has, I can say, she's even experienced violence in her life. But she, she kept looking to God, but she stayed for God, to God be the glory. She's now a judge and, and resides in the Lowndes County, Lowndes County area. So at this time, I'd like you to put your hands together. We're gonna bring forth to you, Judge Vanita Lee Bender. All right, come on now, come on now. She, uh, y'all, you start getting y'all time, y'all ain't gonna wanna clap. So, clap for her before, before, before she put that robe on. Judge Bender. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, again, my name is Judge Renita Lee Bender. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my father is Horace Lee Jr. My mother was um, Ruth Alice Lee. If we have any Packer fans here, um, you probably remember two of my older brothers, um, Horace Lee or Buddy, who played football back in the early 80s, and James Lee or Flapjack played quarterback in the um, late 80s. Yeah. And for those of you who may be looking at me thinking she looks familiar, but I just can't think of her name, you might know me by my nickname, Boo Boo. <laughs> all right, all right. All right <laughs> Although I live in Valdosta now, I always consider Motri to be home, and I am so happy that you allowed me to come back here to talk with you on today. Um, when people ask me what was it like growing up in Moultrie, I always tell them that Moultrie was a great place to grow up. That in my neighborhood and in my community, everybody looked out for everyone else. The grown-ups in the neighborhood watched over me, helped to raise me, and whipped my butt when needed. Amen. I would not be where I am today if it were not for you all here, the grown-ups in my community, and for Moultrie, so I would like to thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Now, although I stand before you as a judge on today, if I would have stood before you over 20 years ago, I would have stood before you as a sister whose 19-year-old brother was murdered in a senseless act of violence. He was taken from us way too soon. And one thing that I will never forget is the picture of my mom running down the road because my brother was shot down the road from our house and a mama having to watch her child bleed out on the ground. And that is something that I carry with me every day. Now I know that there are those here who today, on today, who have also lost loved ones. There are probably mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters who had someone that passed on way too soon. We all stand here today united in our grief for those who have gone on before us. So that means that we must also stand together, united to stop the violence. I want all of you to think back to how it was when it was growing up in our neighborhoods in Moultrie. How the kids could go outside and play, shoot marbles, play basketball. You didn't have to worry about them as long as they got home before dark. Yeah. For those mothers and grandmothers, Think about how your children and your grandchildren could walk down to the Northwest Pool, the gym, and the youth center, and you didn't have to worry about whether or not they were going to make it home before dinner. Think about how we could go out in our front yards and barbecue and cook out, joke with family and friends, and you didn't have to worry about whether or not a stray bullet had your name on it. Yes. While you're thinking about how things used to be, I want you to think about how things can be that way again. Mm -hmm. Think about what we need to do to make our neighborhood safer. Think about how we can be like those grown-ups in our neighborhood who watched over our children, encouraged them to finish school, get a good job, and make something of their lives instead of becoming involved in gang violence. Yes. So on today, I want to thank all of you for caring enough about your neighborhoods, your community, and Moultrie to join us here today at this rally to stand up and say no to violence. Thank you. Amen. 
you, Judge Lee. And I've, I've, I've heard, I don't know if I get this right, but I've also, I've, I think I've heard it. Am I right, Ms. Wilcox? If I'm correct, raise your hand when I state this. Behind every woman, there's a good man. That, is that what I heard right? I see somebody that waving their hand on the down low over there. <laughs> so, behind every good woman, there's a man. A good man. And Judge Bender will tell you she got a good man. Because the man she got, he quiet. He don't go nowhere. He used to be in the neighborhood, I can remember, and he might not know that when he first got on the, on the force. By the way, he's he's on the law enforcement team here in Carpenter County. Right. He might know this, but I don't know if he heard this. When he first got on the force, people used to ask, "Is he got more more bullets than Barney Sykes?" <laughs> because he was they, they considered him to be, he and Herman Cosa were considered to be the Barney Fife of the city in the county. But I can I can lower and tell you, no matter how many bullets he had, he stood up for what was right. And he did not do. He did not cut no corners. Yeah. And he, when he slides the cake, he didn't give you no hook. He gave you a good piece, and he gave you the right piece. So now our deaf supervisor here in the Carquit County area, over our, for our kids and the protection of our kids, I'd like to bring before you Detective, Detective Sergeant, whatever you want to call him, Terrell Bender. Let's have a fun, Terrell. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Lieutenant Tenero Bender of the Cawhill County Sheriff's Office. I've uh, been at uh, your Cawhill County Sheriff's Office since 2001. Uh, right now I supervise not only the training division for this uh, Sheriff's Office, but I also supervise your school resource division, which includes your two resource officers at the high school, the one at Willie J, C.A. Gray, and two of us that teach on the elementary level. I appreciate your warm welcome and, and introduction. Uh, some of it I admit to and some of it I won't. On behalf of the sheriff who couldn't be with you today, uh, he had a medical procedure over to over yesterday, which kept him out all weekend. Um, he wants to come and say that we too, as part as the sheriff's office, stand behind you in this fight against violence in our community. Uh, we also at the sheriff's office are engaged in actively uh, pursuing people who want to bring crime to our neighborhoods, and we too tell them that. Don't pick Conquer County and Moultrie, Georgia as a place to stop off if you want to uh, try to enforce your violence here because we are standing here to say that we're not going to have it here in, uh, in Moultrie and Conquer County. We want to want you to know that if you pick up that phone and you call, whether it's Coffin County Sheriff's Office or the Moultrie Police Department, that we're concerned about you, we're concerned about your neighborhoods, and we're concerned about your community. We just don't pass off information and, 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 and just say that it's nothing to it. We look into all complaints uh, very, very rigorously. So feel free to pick up that phone and call us. You are our link. We can't be everywhere. We can't know everything. We have to continue to communicate with each other because law enforcement is not only an effort between us arresting people, but we have to have that effort from you to give us the information. So please, do not, do not hide or keep your information. If you know something, whether it's big, whether it's small, whether you don't know, pick up the phone and give us a call and let us look into it. Um, we're at the Conquer County Sheriff's Office. are here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if there's anything we can ever do for you, uh, feel free to call me or call the sheriff's office at 616-7430 and report any crimes or anything that you might have that uh, you feel is useful to keep your community safe. Hope everybody has a good dry day because it looks like it's going to be wet and I'm glad to see the crowd that's, that's out here today. I, I, I was very surprised to see the crowd that's out today. So that lets me know that a lot of people stand behind this effort that crime, drugs, and people who are not here to uh, to help us have a good, safe community are not welcome here. Thank you, and you guys have a good day. Thank you, been there. Now, coming to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you a man who is a man among men, a giant among the giants, a pleasure to hear, and a delight to see. He is a retired U.S. Armed Force person. He's an activist. 
And he's a former NAACP president of Lowndes County, Valdosta area. And also I told earlier that he would be on, you would be on YouTube at Boston GBR, which has 2,500 videos and over 200,000 views. So ladies, as I bring to the stage, none other than Mr. George Boston Ryan. Greetings. Greetings. It is indeed a privilege for me to be asked to be here today. I'm from Quitman, Georgia, retired from the military and stationed right now in Valdosta, Georgia, not stationed by way of the military, but I'm stationed to do a work for my people in community, state, nation, and world. I took an obligation to defend this nation against both foreign and domestic enemies. And I thank God that you all are here today to defend your homes, your children, and your future. I just want to say, and I got to go because I got another meeting in Valdosta, I want to thank the judge from Valdosta, whom I respect, and her husband and family. You know, it's strange. It's a strange thing in our world. I can go back when we could leave our doors unlocked. Yeah. And we didn't have to worry about nobody coming in and taking anything. Uh -huh. So now I can talk to you all about stopping the violence. But the brief time that I have this evening, I want to take a different approach. If I was going to talk to you about Jesus, and if you would look into your mind, you would say, somebody already told me about Jesus today. If I were going to talk about God, if I were going to talk about the black on black crime, you would, you would say somebody have already told us about that today. So just keep in mind what you have already heard. I don't like to be redundant when I stand before my people. And so I'm going to try to give you something that you haven't heard yet. Is that all right? Oh, yeah. Jesus said, or the Bible says in the Old Testament, where there is no vision, the people perish. perish. So there's no need of me giving you the information in kindergarten class when you are ready to graduate from college. Amen. So now, everything that we've talked about, the crime, the drugs, the gang activity, we got to look Beneath those things, there is an undercurrent. Do we know what the undercurrent is? I want y'all to think with me. I'm not a speaker, I'm a teacher. Yeah. I said I'm not a teacher, I'm a speaker. Uh -huh. I'm not a speaker, I'm a teacher. Y'all sound say, maybe he confused. I'm not a teacher, I'm not a speaker, I'm not a preacher, but I am a human being. Yeah. And I am housed in a temple called the church. Yeah. The Thessalonians tell us, know ye not that your bodies are what? The temple of God. Now I'm going to reel it into you. Behind all of these things, your sons and your daughters, if they don't have a job, if they can't find a job, if they done been to jails and prisons, and if they got a felony, and if the white man don't hide them, and if the Koreans don't hide them, and if the Japanese don't hide them, and if the black people that got business don't hide them, what in the hell are they have left to do? Y'all don't have to clap with me. You can act like I'm speaking a foreign language, but I know I'm right. I don't have to get your amen because I'd be on the street with the young people. And the young people got another story to tell. You wondering why they're not in your churches? Because they got another story to tell. That ain't been heard and don't nobody want to talk about. But I'm here to tell you that I'm here to tell you the truth. Because St. John 8.32 says, and this was Jesus speaking, saying ye shall know the truth, and that the truth shall make you free. Not the game plan, but the truth. These police officers in this black uniform, they carry it on their cars, and if they don't, they should. The shield of David, representing peace. 
But there is no peace when a man go to school, get his degree, and then go for a job, and then tell him he ain't qualified. I know y'all don't want to hear this, but you shouldn't call me to preach. You shouldn't call me to speak if you don't want to hear the truth. Because these young people are hurt today. These people can tell you the crooked police officers. They can tell you he's beating them up in jail. They will tell you who mistreated them in the prison system. They will tell you about the crooked judges. But ain't nobody talking about that. Won't nobody say that because they are afraid. But my God told me to tell you today that my God didn't give us the spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. And that's what Brother Ryan's got, a sound mind. I don't do drugs. I don't run around with women. I am not a gay boy. I am not a wicked boy. I am an upright man who can speak the truth because this is what God called me to do. Now, if y'all got a question, if you say, Brother Rhymes, what is the, your subject today as you speak? I ain't got no subject. Listen, I don't give no subject. I am the subject. I am the subject of threats on my life. I am the subject of creating a YouTube on YouTube called Boston GBR. If you call the members of the National Action Network, Al Sharpton, he knows me. If you talk to Edward DuBose, he knows me. If you talk to the United States Justice Department, they know me. If you talk to Eric Holder, they know me. Why do they know me? Because I love you. And all these people, first of all, how many pastors here raise their hand? All pastors raise their hand. All pastors raise their hand. One. Two, three, we got three pastors here. Can I get a neighbor? Can I get one more? Can I get one more pastor? Now let me ask you a question. Who do you give your tithe money to? Who do you give your offering to? Why are they not here today? Don't you have churches in Moultrie? Is there any churches in motion? Yeah. I passed a few of them coming in here. I counted more than three. Now look, if we are not going to hold our leaders accountable to us, what in the heck are we holding them up so high for? Now I didn't come to criticize them. Y'all hear what I say? I did not come. But I want y'all to think today, if somebody don't tell the truth today. Our children is going to suffer. They're going to go down. They're going to go into hell. And if we don't act right, if we don't think right, if we don't dream right, our children going to go deeper into hell because we are not doing what we are doing. So don't blame these children so much. Look at the parents. Look at the leaders. Look at the doctors. Look at the lawyers. Look at the professional people that are making a hundred thousand dollars a year, but they done lost connection with you. I don't know what's happening here today, y'all. You know, if I was in a club and I was speaking like this, do you know what they would be doing? They would be on their feet. But I want you all to know something before I close, because my message don't seem like it's being received by you. And when my message is not being received, I'm a smart man. I take my seat. Because Jesus said, if you go into a man's house, if you go into a community, and if they don't receive you, then shake the dust off your feet. And I know I'm telling the truth today. I know it's been a long time if you ever even heard anybody talk like this. Because I'm retired from the military. I could pump myself up and act better than you. But this is why my life has been threatened. Because I go to the drug dealers. I sit down and I talk with them on the street. I find people who are looking for a job. 
and tell me about how they were discriminated and got white folks sitting in the job that they were sitting in and they were better qualified. Now y'all asking me, say, Brother Ryan, why are you saying that when you got white people in the audience? Don't worry about it. No, I got to worry about it. I got to worry about it because Jesus told me to make it plain. Let me tell you something. If any white person is out here today, it's because their heart is right. You got to realize something. For black folk to hate white folk, you are misrepresenting your mom and dad. Your mom and daddy didn't teach you to hate white folk. And y'all know that. We know that as a people, if there had not been for white, right people, Jews, Protestant, Catholic, and others, we wouldn't have never got off the plantation. It was white folk that, 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 that spearheaded the Underground Railroad. It was white folk that set up the NAACP, along with the Jews, the black folks, and others. But it ain't about skin color, y'all. It's about the voice and the flavor in your heart. You see, if your heart is black, if your heart is right, if your heart, it's all about heart. That's why Paul said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind. He didn't say your heart. Uh, 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 look, and I'm going to close. Do you all know the power of the mind? Do you know your heart is important? Do you know how God cased it with ribs to protect it? But look what God did for your brain. Because the brain is a hard drive. The brain controls everything. Your muscles, your nerves ties in with the brain. Your heart, listen, you can live without a heart. They can give you a pump. And that pump will keep you alive as long as the pump keep pumping. But when that brain shut down, so what are you talking about? Whenever you do drugs, young folk, you mess up the hard drive. Your hard drive become uh, infected with a virus and you can't never get it out. At best, you can stop and become better. Y'all don't finna go back to Valdosta, but I want you all to know, the reason I talk like I do is because I love you. My life been threatened so many times until it ain't even funny. And I know what I do, and I know what I speak. I know what I speak is right. And a lot of black professional people a lot of white professional people who are my friends, they tell me what goes on behind closed doors. And a lot of white folks ain't happy with what's going on. But they are just as scared as hell as we are against the weekend, against those who don't care nothing about God, who don't care nothing about Jesus. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. For me to be called over to Moultrie, I don't know who in the heck called me, but whoever called me to be over here, they had to have some guts because they know that I love God too much to get over here to dip. dip. Y'all know what dipping is. Dip is when you duplicate Jesus, duplicate Muhammad, duplicate Moses, or any of the other way. You just dip. You play a game. You have a meeting like this. But Dr. King did not have the meetings. Dr. King's life was threatened like mine because he put his foot down. He told it like it was. And so we need you to stop dipping, duplicating, imitating, and placating, and be and live the life of Jesus. Don't just play that game in church. I don't hardly want to go to church no more because I'm tired of the games I see. And many of you all are tired of the game you see, but you're too weak to say what I'm saying. But God gave me this to give you because that cannot be no resurrection. Listen, y'all, I promise you, I'm finna take my seat. But think about this. Think about this. There would have been no resurrection if Jesus had not endured the pain and the suffering of the cross and being lied on and talked about and took before the political presidents of his day. And so you, if you say you want to be like Jesus, then be willing to suffer and die with him. Because though we suffer and though we die, by the blood of the Lamb, we shall overcome. Listen, Boston GBR on YouTube. Boston GBR on YouTube. Everything that you've seen so far today, it will be on YouTube. You know why I'm putting it on YouTube? Because you see the South Georgia news media don't tell our story. And this is why I started blogging about six years ago. 
when I found out that the Valley of Steel Time wouldn't tell our story. And so I started putting YouTubes up. And now Channel 6 and Channel 10 and ABC and recently NBC and Al Sharpton people calling me now. And why are they calling me? Because like Paul Harvey say, I give them the rest of the story. Boston TBR. Bye bye, we're gone. I love you. You don't get this from people unless they love you. Bye bye, we're gone. Come on now, we can do it up there, man. We're gonna, uh, uh, again, we want to thank Bro Boston Rhymes for coming forward with us. And Bro Rhymes, I tell you, there's quite a few people in Motion that do not deal. You know, we ain't gonna be in, we ain't gonna bow. We gonna stand forward, stand straight. But they were told me, if you stand up, they cannot ride it back. So we here in Motion, Georgia, we are standing up. We're starting today. We're standing up with the vow. And we're going to say, stop the vow and turn to God. At this time, graciously. Step on the devil's head. We finna step on the devil's head. 
Sardar. Only in Moses yes. Sardar. Have mercy, Jesus. It's for all the people. It's for all the people that need to be, to be encouraged just a little bit. And you've been going through some things and you know you ain't done right. I don't know you can do like that. I'm talking about since you've been saved. I ain't talking about none of y'all perfect folk. I'm talking about the folk like me that done been through some storms. I didn't know you since you've been like saved. That. That's good. That's good. But you That's know what I love to do? I love to ask God. Why don't you clap your hands? Why don't you clap your hands? Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Yeah. Who has the right to go up to the Lord? 